This session particularly designed for understanding the different problems of equilibrium of particles. Particles are basically defined when we have concurrent system of forces and all, where all the forces passes from a single point and in that case the shape of the body or the size of the body is not important only the mass of the body is considered as a focused at, on a single point and all the forces passes through a single point and we can write the equation of the equilibrium. So uh, basically what types of forces we are going to deal here we are going to deal the forces coplanar forces that means our problem will be basically defined in two dimension as the system will be a four concurrent forces then only we can say it's a particle when we have the system of particles we have to write the equilibrium then the equilibrium basically has to be defined by the balancing the forces and as it's a concurrent force system this equation is not required which is the moment balance equation we are going to write the equation for balancing of the horizontal forces and the vertical forces otherwise we can also apply Lamy's theorem to solve the problem where if there are three forces and opposite angles are available we can use this formula to find the unknown values the only important thing we have to keep in our mind that we can solve a joint or a point where maximum two unknowns exist why because we are having two equations so at a time we are able to solve only two unknown unknowns for a particular particle equilibrium so now let's start with the problem here is my first problem where you can see that there is a 4 bar chain mechanism defined by A, B bar, B, C, C, D and D, A. D, A is basically your fixed bar. We are applying a 2 kilo Newton force on point, at point B and the direction of 2 kilo Newton force is 45 degree from bar B, C and 75 degree from A, B. Similarly, we are applying a second force P here and it is stated that in this condition the 4 bar mechanism is in equilibrium state here there are these are the bodies but we are interested in writing the equilibrium of point B and point C so before I start the problem let's see what will happen as I will apply a 2 kilo Newton force here on the bar AB and the joint A is a pin joint so it is free to rotate about this point so this 2 kilo Newton force is trying to rotate the system or this bar in clockwise sense and as this will go in the clockwise it will push the connect this intermediate rod and this force will try to rotate this bar about point the D in clockwise sense on the same time if we are applying a force at point C this force is trying to rotate the bar in the opposite direction and, and so other bar will rotate accordingly that means the, the equilibrium is possible because these two force is trying to oppose each other and our job is to find the unknown value P so that system becomes in equilibrium state so now we know that there are two points point B and point C and when I will apply a force at this point there will be forces transmitted through BC and BA similarly there will be force from CB to CD uh, I would like to mention at this point that suppose I am going to make the free body diagram of point B I, am, I know this is my known value which is 2 kN force at the same time the force BC and force BA is unknown to me so I don't know the direction of these two forces will be towards the node or away from the node so easy way is to consider any any direction when you will solve the problem if the answer is negative that means the direction considered is wrong and we have to alter the direction or if the answer is positive we can consider that it's a correct direction so generally what I follow I normally consider all the force away from the nodal point and conventionally a force away from the nodal point is a tensile force so I consider both the force of tensile nature and when I will write the equation for the equilibrium if my answer is positive then the assumed direction is correct otherwise I have to consider the direction would be opposite 
So here are my free body diagram. This is the first free body diagram which is of point B. Here this is 2 kN force. This is a FAB which is unknown and this is FBC which is the second is also unknown. This is the second free body diagram of point C. This is my P force, this is my BC force and this is my CD force. So now let's start with the first free body diagram and try to write the equation for the equilibrium. Now again here is again an important point that once I have free body diagram of a point my general approach is to consider the reference horizontal axis and reference vertical axis and then try to write the equation of the equilibrium for summation of all the horizontal forces and summation of all the vertical forces. But here if I will consider my quadrant or my reference uh, axis in this way I have to first calculate this angle and then other angles. On the other hand, if I will assume that my reference axis are not this way or instead these my reference axis are defined by this direction, by this way. So if I will consider my reference axis, one of the axis is along BC and other axis is perpendicular to BC. So now this is my x axis and this is my y axis and I am not going to use the conventional horizontal and vertical axis and please keep it in mind that if you are going to if you are rotating your reference axis there will not be any effect because this is the reference and you are defining these reference these, these are not the reference system decided you are free to decide the reference point so it will not affect the answer so now as I have these are my reference value I know that the force of these 2 kN with my positive x is 45 the force of second force is 75 so remaining angle which will be the 180 minus 75 plus 45 and that will become 60 degree. So now I know all the angles and I have to simply write the equation of the equilibrium. I know this would be my angle that will be 90 and 60 plus 70. So 75 plus 60 will be 135. And 135 minus 60 will also become the 45 degrees. So here is my equation that if I am going to balance the horizontal forces. So please keep it in mind that now my reference axis are this way and there will be three forces. One is FBC which is acting along the reference axis. Another one is 2 kN and third one is FAB. And all the angles are this is my 45 degree angle. This is my 60 degree angle. Uh, then the problem will be solved. So now let's write the equation for horizontal force balance and vertical force balance. So I am assuming this is my horizontal direction now or I should write that the force balance along the x and force balance along the y. So force balance along the x will be FBC plus 2 cos 45 minus because the component of FAB along this line will be defined by FAB cos 60 but as I am assuming these are the positive forces then this will be negative force so I, my equation will be FBC plus 2 cos 45 degree minus FAB cos 60 when I will balance the forces along the y direction then my force will be minus FAB sin 60 because this is in the negative y direction 2 if component of 2 will also be in the negative y direction and there will not be any component of force BC in this direction and this is the benefit of considering the uh, my rotated reference axis because now I have to consider only two forces when I am resolving the force along the y. Instead of that if we would have considered these are references axis then in both the direction our three forces effect will come and our equ equation would have been become complicated. So always consider that if you have a choice to consider your reference axis in the rotated position definitely you should use the reference axis with the uh, with, the, with the different orientation. So using these two equations I will able to calculate FAB and FBC which are coming out to sin 45, sin 60 and 2.23. Similarly here also I am having point C reference and again I am showing here that these are the conventional X and Y but here also we are not going to use the conventional X and Y instead of using these two conventional I am going to consider this would be my one reference axis and this would be my another reference axis. But uh, I am I know that this is not the 90 degree angle so my another reference axis will pass somewhere. 
like this and here I have to write all the angles and then I can write the equation so I know that FBC is negative direction so minus FBC P force is acting and the angle of P force will be 60 degree you can refine from here the third force is having an angle of 45 degree from this so I know that the other angle will be 45 plus 60 105 so 105 minus will be 75 so FCD will be cos 75 when I will write the equation along the my new or my rotated x and y coordinate these are the I am not going to use this one so when I will write the equation my answer of P is coming out 3.04 kilo Newton so here is the recap of the problem that there are four four bar chain having two forces I have to write the equilibrium of point B and point C and what what is the important thing we should learn from here that is the we are not always bound to use the conventional horizontal and vertical direction or our x and y reference axis based on the conditions we are free to consider any reference which is having some orientation with the horizontal and vertical direction and then we can write the equation and we will we can calculate the unknown values now let's see the second problem which is showing that there are two cylinders cylinder 1 and cylinder 2 are placed on a corner of two wall but the horizontal wall is actually having a position or the this is the slant surface and a vertical wall and the question stated that there are two 500 Newton identical cylinders these cylinders having the same radius same weight supported by an inclined plane and a wall this is my wall this is my inclined plane assume all surfaces are smooth mean there is no friction considered and find reaction at all the contact points so now first let's see that where are the contacts so my contacts can be defined that point A is the contact for the cylinder 2 with the inclined surface point B point C and point D so here we should keep in mind that when we make reaction from an inclined surface we should always understand that the direction of the reaction will always be perpendicular to the direction of the inclined face so here when I will write the free body diagram I know that when I will make the free body diagram of first cylinder this is the free body diagram so there will be number of forces one force is coming toward this side and this is my reaction which is perpendicular to my plane here also I will be having one reaction that reaction will be perpendicular to the inclined plane similarly the third reaction will come and that will also be perpendicular and the force force will be a mutual force between the first cylinder and the second cylinder so this is my first free body diagram where this is my reaction at point B and angle of this reaction from the horizontal we can write that as I know that if I will complete this triangle I know that this is 30 degree so this would be my 60 degree angle so this is be, this reaction is having a 60 degree angle from the horizontal this is my RD and I know that this, this is the radius uh, if I will join the radius of two point there will be a line which is parallel to the base so the force along this line will be having an angle 30 degree from the horizontal because this line is parallel to the inclined face third one is the gravitational force and fourth one is reaction because of the vertical wall similarly when I will make the free body diagram of second cylinder I know that there will be a reaction which is also having an angle 30 degree so this is my uh, this is 60 degree angle sorry because when I will complete this triangle as I did here I am going to know that this will be the 60 degree angle similarly I am having a reaction which is acting which is which is on cylinder 2 due to the force coming from cylinder 1 here one of the important observation should be that I am going to make this reaction towards the cylinder sometime student made mistake and create a reacting force which is going away from the cylinder and then student did that this is the gravitational force this is the reaction this is the reaction from the ground and this is the reaction from cylinder 1 to cylinder 2 so this is not correct actually what what is happening that cylinder 2 is applying a force on cylinder 1 so the force because of the 2 this is basically the force applied by 2 on cylinder 1 similarly equal and opposite force will be applied by this is the force which is applied by cylinder 1 
on cylinder 2. So now I have two free body diagram and the next job when I will have the free body diagram is to write the equation for the equilibrium. I am again going to make a second diagram in this case what I did instead of considering the converging forces towards the center of the body I have just replaced or transferred this force from here to here similarly here to here so now I am having a free body diagram where all the forces are going away from my point of equilibrium here also I made same thing that I shifted this force from here to here this is here to here and this is here to here so now generally it becomes it becomes easy when you first transfer all the forces because now I have to get they I, I will be it will be easy for me to visualize the component of the forces when I will write the equation for the equilibrium for the first free body diagram here is my equation of the equilibrium that RC is plus if this is the equilibrium along the horizontal direction or positive x direction so RC then horizontal component of RD and horizontal component of RB both will be towards the left so I am going to consider these two will be with the negative sign similarly when I will do the vertical balance my RB force will be upward the RD component will be downward and that will be also added with the 500 so my RB sin 60 minus RD sin 30 minus 500 similarly when I will write equation for this body I know that RD and RA vertical component of RD and RA will be balanced by the 500 and their horizontal component will be balanced mutually because there is no other force so when I will solve first I am to solve I am going to solve this free body diagram which will give me the value of uh, relation between R and R D and when I will going to put this value in this equation finally I am going, going to get these four answers which are showing that the reaction force at all the points will be 265, 12, 48.3, 310 and 481.9 now see the next problem next problem is uh, really very interesting problem and here we have to apply uh, logical mind so that we can understand the physics behind the problem the problem state that find the length AB so in the picture we can see that this is the inclined bar and the length of the bar is AB such that the weight of 8 kilogram can be hanged and the system remains in given configuration means what what we are doing we are applying a force at this point so the force is trying to pull the system in the downward direction however there is a spring and the spring is trying to pull the point towards the rightward so that there will be an equilibrium and we are we are uh, we uh, we have to calculate the length ab so that the equilibrium remains and the system remains in the given configuration where the angle of bar ab with the horizontal is given as 30 degree what else is given given is the spring constant is 300 newton meter and unstretched spring length is 0 0.4 meter that means now in the present condition the spring is not unstretched the spring is stretched and we have to find the length AB so let's imagine that what happens earlier suppose uh, initially there were no weight so I can assume that the this is my point A this is my point C and both the bar and the spring are connected in this way this is my spring and my spring is unstretched so there may be a unstretched length of 0 0.4 of my spring and this is my length AB which is unknown to me as I will apply a force or a weight here the system because of the gravitational force this point will try to move in the downward direction so basically what will happen this arm will rotate along at this radius so the system will have a new configuration in that case this bar AB will come somewhere here and this spring will become horizontal and there will be a weight in the downward direction so earlier my position was like that there will be a line bar in the spring when I, I will add a weight here this bar A will rotate towards the center of A and it will uh, acquire a new position which is given to us where this angle is given as 30 degree and we are interested to find the length AB so now if I am I will be when I will be able to find the forces in the spring I will be able to know the stretched length of my spring because unstretched length is given but stretched length is not given and total length is given so if I 
in the current state if i will be able to get the forces in the spring i will divide the force by the spring constant and i will get the extension or the increased in change in the length of the spring which i am going to add with this value so finally i will get the new length of the spring which will be bc and then using the trigonometry i can calculate the length ab so now let's solve the problem so first i am going to make the free body diagram of point b this is my free body diagram where force bc is the spring force force ab and w and as w is known to me i can write the equilibrium equation this is the equilibrium equation for horizontal forces and this is the equilibrium equation for the vertical forces when i will solve these two equation i will be able to calculate the forces bc and ab and now again as i know the force bc and i already explained that now in the present state the spring is stretched so if the spring is stretched i if i will use this formula i will be able to get the extension in the spring and when i will add this extension to my unstretched length i will be know, knowing the length bc so when i will use this k del x f b c so i will be able to see that now my extension or the change in length of the spring is 0.453 and my unstretched length is 0.4 so now in the current state which is the which is this configuration my bc length will be 0.853 and as i know that the total length is 2 meter whereas this length is calculated as 0.853 is the distance from here to here i will be able to know that what would be this distance this would be my 2 minus 0.853 and this distance is basically the cos component of line ab or bar ab so when i will do this exercise i can calculate that ab will be 1.32 meter now the last problem of this session which is a simple problem but very important particularly for the exams generally these type of problems uh, asked in the exam the problem states that there are wires connected in this way and we have to find the maximum weight w so that no single wire tension go beyond 100 newton now there are 1 2 3 4 4 wires we are not going to consider this is as the wire so uh, so and all the wires are hooked or at the wall ab c a point is a hook point c point d point and joint b is here and joint e is here and what is stated that if i will apply force w all the wire will experience tension and the maximum tension should be should not go beyond 100 newton so my question is that in which wire i am having maximum tension and that is the question we have to find the tension or a relation of the tension and the load w in all the wire and we have to identify that in which wire a maximum tension exist and that would be the wire where the maximum tension should be put 100 newton so let's solve the problem and try to find out the tension in all the wires here you can see that the new thing we see that instead of showing the angle of bc be bar a gradient is given so using this gradient we have to find this angle which is easy because it is a right angle triangle and the hypotenuse is 5 base is 3 and perpendicular is 4 so using the trigonometry i can calculate this angle theta which is going to be used to as, uh, find the horizontal and vertical component when i am going to consider the equilibrium of joint e so first first i am writing the equilibrium of joint b where there will be three forces and as i stated in the beginning that i usually consider all the forces of tensile nature however it is these are the wires so all the forces will be of so suppose this is t tension or i would write the f b c here my tension or force will be f a b here it will be f b e similarly f e d now this is the equilibrium of joint b so i am having one force bc one force be and when i will calculate the angle using this 
gradient I am getting an angle phi is 53.1 degrees. So now when I will solve the horizontal force balance equation or the force balance along the x direction, here is my equation. FBC cos 30 FB cos 53.1 and minus FA because horizontal component of BC and B will be in the positive direction. However, FAB is in opposite direction. So my equation will be uh, BC cos 30 BE cos 53.1 minus FBA. Similarly, when I will consider the vertical force balance, there will not be any car, car contribution of this force because it is in along the x direction or the horizontal direction and the vertical component of these two forces will be balanced each other. So this would be my equation. Now, uh, I don't know the unknown values, but when I will solve the equilibrium of my point E, here is the equilibrium of point E where this is phi angle. This is my joint E. So I am having FED in uh, with an angle 30 degree from the horizontal which is given here this is my w force and this is the third force which is be which is common for this so from these equations i will calculate fb and i am going to use this fb in this diagram so that i will get a re uh, relation of w so now when i am going to solve this triangle where phi is given phi is 53.1 which we have calculated using the given gradient this is my second equation for the balancing of my joint e Horizontal component of ED will be in this direction and horizontal component of BE will be in the opposite direction. There will not be any contribution of load W along the X direction force balance. So this would be my equation for the X direction force balance. Similarly, when I will balance the vertical forces, the vertical component of these two forces will be balanced by W and this would be my fourth equation. When I will solve these four equations algebraically and here you have to solve the equation very carefully because this is the point where generally student does mistakes they 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 in hurry they solve the problem uh, and they get the wrong answer and that one wrong answer spoil this whole solution because there is a propagating nature of the solution because one, once you will get one value you are going to put one value in the other equation and the other answer will also be spoiled so when i will solve the problem i am getting these are my four forces one is the 0.873 w all the answers are coming in an unknown value w and here i can see that when i will apply a force w at this point my bc will be 1.394 and ba will be 1.73 so this ba having the highest tension so when i will apply a force here this would be the wire which is having highest tension and if i am going to put the tension in this wire as 100 newton i will be able to find the value of load w because fba will become equal to 100 newton because this is the maximum tension wire can uh, be subjected and which is giving a w value 57.7 newton when i will putting back w in all the force value here are my four answers thank you